All right, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. <laughs> As you can see, we got game number two coming at you. A little bit of a break there. Uh, one of the players had to go AFK for a little bit, but we're back now. That's what matters. We got game number two again, going to be coming at you here. Uh, what is uh, what is already a pretty intense series, a crazy game number one we had there, uh, with of course uh, Team NK eventually making the full comeback and taking game number one over Team Kage. You're going to go one nothing up in this best of three series. Here we are in the round of 16. So, again, Team Kage, uh, this has, this is a team that bounces back and forth between that diamond and gold division. But, like I was talking about for this this cycle here, it happens to be kind of a newer team as far as the players that are on it. So, not too surprising to see them even compete with Team NK and even have the lead there. Yeah, but, uh, in the end, again, Team NK Four came through. Beast. Already see a little bit different coming out this game. With that said, the game number two, we got the banning phase First things first, it was Pestilence, Ophelia, Grinix, and Keeper, it looks like, or the bands. Tempest going to be that first pick. Warbeast to follow. And there's the Rhapsody once again coming out, this time by Team Kage, actually. Uh, they're going to get their hands on Rhapsody. So, obviously, the only difference last game is that Pestilence actually Corrupted being banned up in the initial bands, of course. Uh, Corrupted Disciple is now going to be the hero following. Uh, for Team NK. So, again, that Warbeast pickup. It, although he got the nerfs to the point of their try, the idea was, you know, maybe to try to get him to go to that jungle with the balance changes. And that recent balance patch 3.3. It's uh, We've still seen Warbeast ask more of that suicide op option in the end. So, uh, when, when it's all said and done, I'm sure uh, we'll still see him in the suicide here for Team NK. Get the Corrupted Disciple, possibly more part of that short lane. So, last game we had the Tri versus Tri lane action. Already shaping up to be different here. Of course, the Tempest pickup from Team Kage. Rhapsody on top of that. Now, they can't get that Pestilence combo. That seems like it works out pretty well in that middle lane, especially. But uh, Drunken Master is still on the board. No, they, they ran him last game. Seems like they might like him. We'll see if that perhaps is an option here. But, you know, with uh, Team NK and the lineup on the first two picks, we got to get somewhat of an idea. Usually, Warbeast and the Corrupted Side. More of that grouping up, team fight, team push kind of strategy is what they're looking to aim for. Slither is going to be coming out here with their final pickup for uh, Team Kage before the next tier of bands, of course. So Slither, uh, more of that short laning Slither, perhaps, and especially in that Warbeast matchup. And again, just a very, very strong laner. So uh, that tells you that uh, they're, they're more than likely expecting that to be a suicide of Warbeast. And so want to get their hands on Slither here for that short lane presence as far as that farm is concerned. So. We'll see how that works out for him. <coughs> We're for Team Kaga, that is. Uh, now back for Team NK and how they're going to finish things off here. Again, there was all that talk about Cersei and how powerful uh, she is of a hero on the competitive scene a couple weekends ago, but didn't really see her at all last weekend. And obviously, we'll see how, how much we see her this weekend, but something tells me she might have been more of like a flavor of the weekend kind of hero as, you know, just coming into tournament mode and everything, people wanted to try her out and have fun with her, but Parasite. in the end, and kind of stay away from her. So, Parasite is going to be the final pick for Team NK. I was going to say, you know, there's obviously still something like a Gemini on the board, but with their pickups already, that would be a little overkill as far as the farming and carry presence go. So, of course, not going to become the Gemini. Go in the Parasite. They get their jungle option taken care of. So, once again, no uh, no straight-up Trivish tri lane. Obviously, going to be coming out here by any means, but uh, the idea of uh, a pseudo trial lane wouldn't be out of the question, especially from uh, Team NK with how things are shaping up for them with that parasite pickup. So we'll see. And you know, something tells me mainly even because of that slither pickup, I wouldn't be surprised if Team NK tries to go aggressive against it, knowing that uh, he could definitely be weaker if he's in a non-solo lane matchup. So. We'll see how they address that. Master of Arms, Gauntlet, Bubbles, Wretched Hag. So far, coming out with the bands. Gauntlet kind of a little bit out of left field right there. But again, maybe just one of those cases. They 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 know how the play style of maybe one or two of these players. And you know, that Gauntlet tends to be a hero picked up. So not wanting to have to deal with them if need be. That's what they're basically saying here. So no Gauntlet going to be coming out. As well as a Wretched Hag, who again, Wretched Hag made it all the way through last game. That was a little surprising to see. Not too often a Wretched Hag makes it all the way through. No bans or picks. But uh, that did happen last game. Not going to be this game around, though. Almond and Robbie and right click this whole time by Fabelli. Obviously, I wouldn't be surprised if that's more of a trollish thing. But 
At the same time, hey, they are kind of a new team that just formed together here for cycle number 10. They're down one nothing in the series. Could they try something different, completely off the wall? Hey, I, I wouldn't be against it. <laughs> I'm sure the uh, the fans wouldn't be against it either. So that'd be kind of fun to see here, like Amon Ra, but probably, probably, probably not going to be seen. Engineer and Kraken are going to be the final bands coming out here. As far as uh, as far as that uh, that is concerned. So, uh, with that said, the follow up on the picks now. We'll see uh, what we have. Martyr, another interesting. I remember seeing that Martyr strategy. That was actually really interesting. The idea of uh, level one conquer with Martyr and having the wings and whatnot was a pretty pretty nifty strategy. But in the end, it kind of failed, and we've never seen it since. So, not too surprising. But yeah, not going to be seen here by any means. Rally coming out actually for Team Kage as uh, as far as another pickup for them. And Something tells me that might have a little bit to do with, uh, as a just in case even if they do run an aggressive pseudo trial lane, maybe make some adjustments there and have Rally a part of a, a trial lane setup, maybe something like a Rally and a Rhapsody down there, even just Rally by himself for that matter. Obviously the Capel can help him uh, get away in dangerous situations. So definitely like that pick coming out from Jim Kake. That's multi-purpose here. Which Slayer? Which Slayer possibly going to be the supportive choice now for Team NK? Again, kind of one of those... Kind of one of those teeter-totter kind of support heroes, it seems like. There's, there's difference of opinions. Some will say, you know, not a huge fan of him as a support in the end because you really got to level him up to get that stun locked and to be very effective. But at the same time, others others think it's, it is very effective. You know, you got the miniaturization graveyard combination. Graveyard level one, it is a very weak ability, only one second with a 60 damage. But if you set it up with another stun, more burst damage incoming, then definitely could have potential. So, um, which Slayer pickup coming out here? Probably going to be more of that support role. Madman to finish things off for Team Kage. They go the Madman pick up there. So another one, kind of one of those getaway kind of heroes possibly in that suicide lane this time around. Obviously, Grinix being banned out. Scout's on the board, but Scout did receive those nerfs and want to go the Madman route. Want a little bit of carry presence here with the lineup that they have as well. So uh, they got the uh, they got the Madman to take care of that. So definitely like seeing that pick up there. And again, now the final pick up going to be coming out from Team NK. Uh, expected to be more, maybe something even like a Drunken Master wouldn't be out of the question. Uh, but possibly more of a lane partner for that Witch Slayer, maybe to run that aggressive pseudo trial lane. Uh, or just, or just instead send the mid. Even uh, if you're, if you're expecting Team Kaka to already make the adjustment. Hammerstorm? I want to see Hammerstorm. It's been a while since we've seen Hammerstorm. It's not going to be Hammerstorm, but it is going to be Moraxis. Okay, I can live with that, especially in the hands of Les QQ. Now, it's kind of funny we see it here, because Les QQ was known for playing an amazing Moraxis back in the day. Uh, when he was when he was very uh, much more active, even on the competitive scene. Again, Season 2, we really haven't seen much. I don't even know if we've seen any of Les QQ in Season 2, now that I think about it. But you know, back in Season 1 and earlier on in the competitive scene, he's had his history, and Moraxis was one of his more famous Let's heroes. Let's get so. on. I am excited to see that now. As far as that final pick goes, and again, Moraxis, it, it seems like he's been be, he's been addressed recently. Um, as far as uh, as far as even being banned in some cases and been picked up a couple times here and there. So again, another one of these heroes. It's it's kind of interesting, you know. You had the patch, and just like Rhapsody, I mean, Moraxis didn't get any changes with that uh, the 3.3 fortified arsenal patch, but he got some attention because of changes that happened to other heroes. So. Uh, picked up here by Team NK, and again, like seeing that. We'll see what uh, Moraxis is able to pull off this game around. When it comes to but like I was saying, no good synergy there with him and the Witch Slayer. Even with the one second stun at level one, you can set up uh, Quake coming out from Moraxis. Good follow up there with the axes to slow him down. So we'll see. We'll see what, uh, what, what it comes down to as far as the lane setup goes. Now, with that said, Witch Slayer is currently headed towards the top lane as far as. Where he is uh, maybe setting up, maybe more of a kind of getting some information as to what uh, Team Kage is going to do. But look at Team Kage, they're getting interesting. Uh oh, Witch Slayer is going to be in trouble. Tank of Fat, he's been completely collapsed on. And there's the no time. chance for him to survive that. Fabelli actually picking up credit for the Bloodlust kill. Embry didn't even get an assist right there. That's a little bit unfortunate, but everyone else does. And the obvious. Uh, very good start there, coming out for Team Kage. So, <laughs> oh, that's that's just rude. 
but uh, which there again after that death, where will he? He is going to be heading to the middle lane, it looks like. So <laughs> he knew it. He even knew it was coming and wasn't able to stop it. <laughs> Calling out their uh, <laughs> their unexpected aggressive play, to say the least. Obviously, they're having fun with one another. They seem to say they uh, they know each other when it comes down to it. So not surprising to see a little bit of the back and forth there. But it is going to be the two v two matchup: Moraxis Witchler versus a Rhapsody Rally. And I gotta think Rhapsody Rally have a uh, have a pretty good shot here of uh, even winning this lane. I mean, I think their their stun presence maybe just a little bit scarier. As well as uh, the initiated, and even for escape as well. On top of that, so. But at the same time, I Miraxis mean, obviously a great last hitter with those axes. He went the hatchet. I'm guessing Riley did as well. So yeah, they both have the hatchet, but they got the axes to assist. So not to say that it's going to be a obviously one lane by any means by Riley Rhapsody, but maybe a slight edge for them. But uh, definitely could be winnable as well for Miraxis and Witch Slayer. So we'll see how that breaks down. Speaking of that, you see right there, great burst an attempt. It's going to just miss. Rhapsody was ready for that attempt. As a result, able to avoid it. So Slither is going to be at the bottom lane here. Again, as expected in that short lane matchup, that's why they picked up this hero, and why a lot, a lot of teams do, of course. Very strong 1v1 presence. Coming out from uh, Team Kage, so Warbeast is just going to hug his tower in the time being, because if he goes out there, takes some harassment, you know, just going to be losing some life, so... No point. Pull in the creep wave, as has uh, good old Warbeast do. And he's now going to farm the creep wave behind the tower, of course. So My guess is that he didn't want an entire range right here of this one, but it just happened. So uh, the battle cry obviously taking that nerf. It's now, it's a, it's a 30 second, 35 second cooldown now. 35 seconds. 35 second cooldown now, yeah, so. Obviously, that guy hit that, so that balance patch. Rhapsody in a little bit of trouble. Yeah, maybe. Axe is coming out. Witch Slayer. He is going to graveyard stun, but it's just just to say hello, basically. So, no follow-up outside of that. Top lane. You have Madman versus Corrupted Disciple. Taking a closer look at him, but this may be going 10 to 2 Madman versus a 10 to 1 Corrupted Disciple currently. So. Belly playing the Madman again, he can definitely handle his own. Got that constant stock ability of the barrel wall for extra damage and harassment. Obviously, the conduit always a very effective tool, but an action could have used that right here, in fact, to help box him out. But again, with that stock and the speed burst, don't get away. Wouldn't expect any kills by any means to happen, but uh, at the same time, gonna help keep him off of getting the free farm at the top lane. So. Definitely a lot different of a start compared to the last game, even though we got the Bloodlust kill right off the bat. Of course, that was just because of the roam of the jungle. Outside of that, though, very passive start here, as you would expect here with this matchup going on. How about that, though? The belly, again, he, he, that's right. He is working off the Bloodlust kill as well, so you got to keep that in mind when you look at this top matchup here. He's going to put some good pressure once again on the Corrupted. Get him pushed all the way back to his tower. And eventually continue to farm. So yeah, that allowed him to get uh, the early on bottle here, getting that bloodlust kill, which is huge. He's got the early boots, the early bottle. Has a great presence in that top lane as a result. So that definitely is big. Uh, for Madman. Middle lane, Moraxis gonna throw that Quake Sun out and let everyone know about it. Holy crap, he is loud when he does that. <laughs> he has a lot to say when he throws out that Quake Stun, but. More so just for harassment, maybe even get a creep kill in there. Witch Slayer headed back towards the top lane, actually. That man's doing that good of a job that they feel they need to have Witch Slayer actually support him up there. So uh, he's going to roam up. Now he ran past a ward of sight while doing this, so he might be in some trouble. You do see the middle lane even coming on over. Witch Slayer going to throw the hex on a madman right there. You see stock's going to be coming out. Witch Slayer knows he's in trouble. He has some dust here. He does have support now coming in, though, and actually he's going to need to throw that stun. There you go. Will he dust? No, he doesn't, actually, but they weren't going to be able to chase him now. Corrupt Disciple was also very low, so that was a very, very defensive graveyard of Leech right there to just keep Witch there alive. So that whole roam for the middle lane completely foiled right there. Now, I will say, though, at the same time, Rally and Rhapsody kind of going over. They uh, they kind of got occupied, so Moraxis was just kind of freely farmed in the middle lane in the meantime, so he didn't really have anything against what happened there. But it's all said and done, but we do see they are going to initiate. Staccato stuns coming out. A little harassment. No kills by any means. Box him out as best they can. He does have a regen root bottle, though. So we'll be able to use that if need be. 
But now Rally back in the middle. And he is uh, very close. 20 and 3 compared to 19 and 3. And Moraxis had a little bit of free time there. And again, Whistles Axis can definitely snipe out some creep kills when it comes down to it. So. <laughs> Back to the top lane now, though. Corrupted Disciple is finding some free farm time. 24 and 2 free farm. You see Madman's going to go all the way back to base. Camp Fairy Bottle. Obviously, it's been a long time since uh, the Fresh Pro days of playing that Suicide Madman. Being able to ferry the bottle made it much more effective. You can't do that anymore. It's been a long time since you're good. Uh, so, let's go all the way back to base to reach, and it's going to teleport back in. And right away, uh, a look to put the harassment on here. Uh, again, Corrupted Disciple, in fact, they ain't looking at that damage, man. I mean. Just from the stock of the barrel roll alone right there. But that's a pretty good damage. Got to keep him on his toes. Bottom lane, Tempest level 6. Has that ring of sorcery. And here we go, pushing the bottom. So they're not going to wards just yet. Well, it's going to 3-3 build here. No poison burst either with that said. But this tower is obviously going to start taking a lot of damage here. Uh, once again, guys, I know that the uh, the mic is a little bit different than it usually is. I do apologize for that if it's if, it is, if that is uh, unbearable for you. Super, it's not, but um, I do know that it is different. Again, it got a it had a different setup going here, so uh, I, I might be able to get that fixed by tomorrow, if not going to the next weekend here. Uh, back to the other setup that I had with the as far as the mic is concerned, but for now, uh, gonna have to bear with it, unfortunately. Uh, but uh, anyway, so back to the bottom lane. Obviously, they do push on the tower. You see the middle lane as they go away from it, of course. Kills happening. They do take out Witch Slayer. No counter kills are able to be taking place right there. They were coming in, but Witch Slayer, unfortunately, just a little bit too low. So kill happening in favor of Team Kage. And now they're going to continue this push again to the bottom secondary tower. They're going to get it. Team NK is not going to be able to respond to this. So. This is once again going to be a very, very good start here. The Legion have destroyed a hell for uh, for Team Kage, just like last game. Already now a 4,800 gold lead with an 1,800 experience lead. Slither is already 1,300 gold saved up. You see, four of the five players are at 330 GPM or higher. That is uh, that is big news, big news for them. So again, if if it wasn't for game number one happening the way it did, it may be feeling a little more confident for Team Kage right now, but. Hey, we all know what happened in game number one. They had a very similar, if not even a bigger lead at this point. And Team NK was able to come back from that. Now, obviously, the circumstances are different in several cases. Um, Team NK, I mean, they do have Corrupted Disciple. He is having a decent start here, at least. So, But actually, Moraxis might be in trouble. He's going to activate that Matrix, but it's not going to be enough. Seismic slam in the face. And Embry will get the kill as a result. And now the middle tower is in trouble. So you can really tell Team Kage. There, they're kind of almost learning their lessons from last game. They're not going to let Team NK, but they're not going to give them any time at least just at, just yet. They're going to push towers to continue to play aggressive. And that's another tower dead. The third tower kill already. And they're still going to go. And, and why not? I mean, this is a somewhat passive team out here on Team NK, of course. You know, the Warbees pick up from the Disciple. Definitely more of a passive start for them. And Team Kage knows it, so they got the ball rolling here. You see uh, Slither, what did he purchase? Something's going to be delivered. Uh, to him, a loss being delivered. He's got an Energizer on the way. Boots of Mystic Vestments on there as well. So this middle tower, <coughs> it is uh, it is taking some good damage. It's not going to be killed just yet. We'll see if they stay in here now. Witch Slayer and Moraxis are nearby. Tower and vulnerability is going to come up. We do have from the side. Parasite's coming in. He is level 6. We'll see if maybe Insania can find an angle right here to make something happen. But... Definitely free to be difficult. Here we go. The witch are gonna be jumped. No follow-up though. Not the most at least. There we go. Poison spray. There's our Tavis ultimate. And it catches Moraxis. Warby's is gonna go nom nom nom. And eventually gets canceled by Moraxis. Does fall, but so does Tempest. So one for one in that fight right there. But now Crumpton Sample, he's just running in circles. He's trying to kite them. It's not gonna be enough. He will eventually fall. Warby's picks off Rhapsody. But Rally goes in with like a Capel that connects on a parasite. Madman with the bear roll to finish him off. And Fabelli gets the double tap. As Slither is going to TP out, the tower does fall as well in favor of Team Kage. And again, the lead just gets bigger and better. 8,200 gold lead now on top of that 2,400 experience. So it's definitely more the gold that's coming into play here. Obviously, the group pushing, that's how it tends to look. But you got Slither now. A beast heart already picked up. So very possible that Icon of the Goddess, of course, is going to be coming out. They do pick off Witch Slayer as well. Not sure how that came into play, but Rally and Madman roaming around and... 
Well, they catch him kind of hanging out as he was pushing up a little bit by himself. So four tower kills already for Team Kage. And, and again, if they're going to keep this up, which they probably are, they're going to head top lane now, and they're just going to keep the damn push going. We got an Astrolay pickup on Tempest. Obviously, having Rhapsody helps with all this. That Disco Inferno buff is just huge for pushing towers. A B-Star picked up on Rally. 1,200 gold saved up on Madman. He's actually going to go bottom lane in the meantime. But the rest of his team is at the top side. And they're at least going to kill the, uh, they're at least going to kill this top tower, of the initial tower. We'll see about going further on, but Warbeast is able to finish off his Abyssal tower. Skull here, so at least he has that going for him. Uh, Corrupted Disciple, obviously just Steam Boots for the teacher and not much else. I need to be careful here. Both teams have a Ward side placed right next to each other. We'll see if uh, that comes into play right here. Morax is kind of creeping up, but he doesn't have a Portic or anything like that, so... No easy jump going to be happening. Not by any means from him, so... Gonna play very passive here. Warby's just gonna farm out the top lane, maybe trying to bait something from Team Kage. Morax is going in, actually. Capel hits the seismic slap. Wish Eric gets touched on right there. He's gonna be picked off. And now we see Matrax gonna be activated by Morax as they do pick off Rally. Matrax will keep him alive. Warby's in ulti form once again. Looking to put the pain up, but here comes Madman. Madman barrel through. He has the stock. He dodges the Quake Stun. He takes out Morax. Very good play by Fibelli right there. He knew that Quake Stun was coming. He purposely dodged it initially. Corrupted Disciple is also going to be picked off as Warby says Sayonara, as well as Parasite. So in the end, especially with Madman coming in, Team Kage makes it work in that fight. And Rally's going to be up in three seconds. Wouldn't be surprised to see him teleport to the top lane and possibly look to push in the secondary tower. We're only coming up to 12 minutes in here, but... This is uh, this uh, this idea of a push strategy is really coming to play. It's still no wards on Slither with that said. It's not really helping in the push in that sense, but they don't really need it, obviously. So, you know, why go for it if you don't need it? I will say maybe for Fish, at least a one point might be decent, but maxing out the toxicity points to spray first. They catch Warbeast, by the way. Rally and Madman going together, and that is a huge pick. This tower is going to probably fall right here. We do have Matt, or we do have Maraxis nearby, but again, no board to cure or anything. It's just him right now. You have Tempest pushing. Elementals are up. This is going to be the final outer tower destroyed. As again, we're only 12 and a half minutes into this game right now, so it is just uh, it, it is just full throttle. Go 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 here for Team Kage. So it's safe to say they're doing uh, they're doing things a little bit different than they did last game. Last game they got the early start. They didn't turn on the throttle. Team NK made them pay. This game, they got the early start. They really pushed that throttle in. <laughs> and now they have a 14,000 gold lead, 7,000 experience lead as we approach 13 minutes into this game. So it is just looking great all across the board. I mean, you try to find positive signs here right now on Team NK. And the best you got is a Corrupted Disciple farming 280 gold per minute. Steam Boots ring of the teacher and not much else, unfortunately. So... You see Warbase, he's trying to get any kind of farm he can get again. He already has an Abyssal Skull, but just sitting on red boots other than that. He's actually going to farm some Elementals right here. So. Rush to show <laughs> misplay by Tempest, but not the biggest deal in the world. Middle lane, which Sarah's going to get caught right here. He puts the Ministerization, actually, but not enough. The Compel follow-up to get the Kelka. You see Conduit coming out, but he just stalks away to remove that debuff. Mamma, by the way, he has a Sustainer picked up, so... Interesting, but it's been a long time since we've seen a Null Stone. But very possibly a Null Stone pick up to come here for Batman. That's always, an, you know, it is a very great mana regen item, obviously. It's great for, you know, it's a great farming tool for a hero like Batman. At this point, you could argue that, you know, Light Brand is more than replacement in the end, but at the same time, I mean, a full Dombrier definitely wouldn't be a bad idea for a Madman. But is that something he's either wants to go for? So he's going to be over the Null Stone. And there is good and bad, obviously. You got your good against something like a Parasite. They have a lot of removal to get rid of it, though. Something like the Power Train, an easy Leech. Um, it will help against a Con. I mean, so it, I could definitely see it being very effective here for uh, for Madman, to say the least. As far as uh, as far as a Nullstone pickup. It's been a long time since we've seen it. It really has been. After for so long in the competitive scene, it actually was kind of a meta. But, um, yeah, again, it looks like we could be seeing it here on Pavelli. But hell, at this rate, too, I mean, who knows how much longer Team NK may try to stay in this, because, again, maybe because the last game, if anything, that's going to keep them in this game for a little bit longer. But this is definitely even a step up compared to last game as far as where they were at. But hey, they came back last game, so 
uh, why not this game, right? But something tells me they are going to be giving up. <laughs> Axerin's dropping all his items, and there goes the concede vote. <laughs> well, that's a sign of concede if I've ever seen one. <laughs> I love it. He just drops all his items. He's like, I'm done. I'm done. I'm out. Peace. Well, there you go. Team Kage, they, uh, they make a statement there in game number two. They take game number 